Hello guys. As uh, I showed you on the last short video, we have a little problem. And this, this return roller came loose. Due to this circlap. I don't know if you can spot it on camera, but it is uh, bent. It sits on the shaft where the return roller is mounted and this bearing this edge is rounded off so most likely a little bit of play on the clip because it's very old uh, the clip itself is new but the the shaft is old and uh, it got rounded over and then pushed off by the bearing um, later models have two holes in the shaft with a cover plate over it clamping down the bearing so that is a lot stronger so I have to see how I'm going to fix this uh, issue, uh, if we're going to put a new circle clip on and hope for the best. So this is the other side, still need to take the cover off and then we can remount it. But what I said most likely uh, it's better to have the later model with the two holes in it and then a cover plate over the shaft. So that the bearing cannot uh, come off, uh, the circle clip is not as strong as two M10 bolts. So most likely we're going to modify the shaft to the later model. You can see the bearing on the other side. So this is the shaft without return roller. You can see in the back part dirt came in because it got moved out a bit. And here you can see the groove for the circle lap. And then the later model they have two holes in here and then a plate over it that keeps the bearing in place. So I have to clean this all off all the dirt it's a grease with uh, sand and you can see in this part is uh, only grease so uh, the bearing and the back side we completely cleaned uh, to get all the sand out and then we're going to remount the wheel and uh, we'll probably drill this first so that you don't have any uh, drill chips in the bearing so the back bearing is back in place then we have this part with the oil seal and then a big circle that keeps everything in place and then you can see down here the groove that is with the, that's for the labyrinth seal That is that easy and for the other side it's the same but with a closed cover plate with a grease uh, fitting. Um, just another thought with uh, this type of shaft that goes in here with the circle lap, it's longer uh, so the, the plate we're going to use if we're going to make that change. Uh, either we have to cut down the shaft, but since it's the original one, uh, we don't want to do that. So the other option is, uh, if we want to use the plate with two bolts, is uh, hollowing out that plate and then put the bolts in. Uh, hopefully there's enough room, because it, that shaft is longer and you only have uh, a certain amount of room. So we even have to see if it fits. Another option is uh, put another ring behind the circle clip if there is enough place to uh, make it stronger. So I have placed the wheel back on to see how much room there is and there isn't that much. Uh, so I have to see what is possible. But I have checked and I thought I checked it before. The alignment is difficult to see on camera. But the last wheel with the problem is sitting further back inwards. So uh, a possibility is to put 
a shim plate in between here to put the wheel further out so there's less stress on that circlap and that way uh, it should be prevented so we can keep the part in its original condition so that means that the next thing is to find out how much we have to shim it outwards and make a shim plate for it so you can see the rope it's difficult to see uh, where it's touching or where it's not but uh, by the looks of this i need to shim it uh, about seven millimeters outwards um, that is about the tolerance a little bit more than the tolerance that uh, we have in play on uh, the gap here for the center guide so yeah it should be, have been all right but apparently it's pushing on the circlap uh, enough to destroy it so uh, if we're gonna move it out seven millimeters then there shouldn't be pressure on uh, the circlap not uh, a lot so that should fix the problem and that's better than changing an original part so yeah we have to make uh, a shim plate for in between the support and then uh, we can uh, continue with uh, putting the new tracks on for testing so until i have the shim plate i will uh, close this off to keep dirt out of the grease and i have put a circlap on but it's one size too small so it is less strong uh, i need a new one one size bigger and you can see there's a little bit of play on it so there is room to put an extra ring in between to make it a bit stronger so we will do, uh, do that too um, yeah that means it needs to come out about seven millimeters what i said before uh, but yeah we will do that uh, to keep uh, all the parts original so i did uh, check this alignment before uh, but you have about uh, plus or minus six seven millimeters of play on uh, the center guide so if the center guide's in the middle you have either sides about six to seven millimeters of room and thus i figured that that wheel had enough play uh, sitting about seven millimeters further inward but apparently uh, with driving it and having a little bit of play the, the circlip gets hammered and thus getting destroyed so taking out uh, that seven millimeters uh, so that the idle wheel plus the return roller in front of this one are all on the outside in line then uh, the circlip uh, shouldn't get much load anymore and uh, stay in one piece uh, we have checked all the other return rollers and they are still on solid uh, so this is the only one with a problem and hopefully with the extra shim plate between the hull and the support it should be uh, fixed last friday evening we put uh, the spacer plate in between and we re-secured the bolts or the nuts and also we have put new tracks on on this side as well so uh, soon it will be time for more test driving at Overloan so keep a uh, lookout for more videos and we will show you uh, all the driving we do uh, with the Nashorn. But for now uh, the problem with this return roller, because it was out of line uh, by a bit, just a little bit, about 7 millimeters, um, whenever we were steering the track could come outwards and uh, it usually doesn't do that softly. So it would hammer against the, the return roller uh, towards the outside and thus putting extra stress on the circlap. Uh, so we just replaced the circlap and we shimmed it outwards so that is, uh, the outside is in line with the return roller in front of it and with the idler wheel. So in that case uh, it, it shouldn't get destroyed anymore, the, the circlap. So the next job is uh, before we go test driving uh, putting the locking pins in and for that uh, we need the pins uh, we already cut them to length and now we have to bend them uh, we start bending them on one side first so that whenever we put them in it's easier to put them in in, uh, in the middle 
because they have to be bent on two sides and uh, yeah if you do that both on the tracks it's more difficult uh, to get it centered properly so uh, to make a tool I have got a little piece of round stock uh, 20 millimeters same as the pen but I'll drill a 6 millimeter 6.5 millimeter hole in it so that the locking pins will fit uh, inside but drilling on the sides of round stock is a bit uh, tricky so I'm gonna do a little dimple first so I have a starter point and then I will weld it on uh, some flat stock and then uh, when that's welded I will drill through to the correct depth for bending over that pin so that I just have to put it in bend it over instead of putting uh, the pin in the vise on the correct height and then bending and then also we can put the chamfer on the hole and that bend is uh, directly the same uh, curve what we did the first time is put them in the vise with something underneath so for the correct depth bend them over but then they're uh, like 90 degrees and then put them in a pin and bend them uh, round on one side so that's a bit extra work so I thought of making this tool this time which should make it easier I've started on the middle in the top but it's uh, rearing off on one side so what I do is then turn the pin so that's straight up again and that way I can drill straight down so now I have to start of the hole I hope you can see it so now it's time to weld it on some flat stock I will do that off camera quickly and then re repeat uh, the drilling to the correct depth so I've welded uh, the pin on the, the flat bar and now can drill to the correct depth which I still have to measure uh, the pin is 60 millimeters so it should be about 40 millimeters long so I'm going to drill to 40 and then uh, bend uh, one or two to see if it's correct. Just shy of 40. So we're going to test with that. Chamfer it first. I'm going to try it uh, off camera real quickly and then I'll show you uh, when this part is finished uh, how it works. So I have uh, tested one and it's about, it needs to go about 2 millimeters deeper. So this is the pin. This is the end result. It fits pretty nicely like this but yeah what I said it needs to be a bit deeper and I'm also going to use a half millimeter larger drill so it fits a little bit easier otherwise you're struggling to get the pin in and out and for the track pin it's not a problem because it's only one time you put them in and then you don't want to take them out uh, unless uh, you have a break in your tracks so then it doesn't matter that it is a bit more tight That should be it. So we're gonna make another attempt and test it. So we've got enough pins here. Let's 
see what the remaining length is. Should be a bit longer now. Yeah, just shy of 40, so 39. And the pin is just over 60, 62. So it can be a bit longer, a deeper. Um, so I have one of the new pins here. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but that is not a problem. So this is what we want. Half of the pin hammered over already. And then the other half still has to go. Which should be about 20 millimeters. Uh, just a little bit shorter. So I can go even a bit deeper in the form. But uh, yeah, the fit is good. So it's a good fit. I'm going to drill it a little bit deeper, uh, so it's a bit more perfect, and then I'll leave it at that, and uh, then I will make a few uh, to see if there are any problems, uh, something I need to change or something. Then I'm going to make a few uh, so that we can start locking the pins, and then another guy can finish the rest of the, pin, the locking pins off. So we can start work at the same time. Not that uh, one guy uh, has to start with these pins and then we have to wait for half an hour so that we have enough pins to start with. So I have uh, about 20 millimeters stick out uh, from the tool and also from the pin, so that's good. So I'm happy with this result. So I have two done, about uh, 220 more to go. So that's what we, yeah, what I usually try to do to prepare for the guys, uh, so that they, when they come here, they can uh, start working on the nas one immediately, uh, or maybe other jobs that we have to do, uh, uh, like uh, we have some uh, jeeps and a half track. There's plenty of work to do on them, but it's always uh, good that one uh, person prepares for it, and we usually have uh, pers one person responsible for each vehicle. So that person then usually takes care of uh, preparing the work and uh, yeah, they let me know they need help on the vehicle or something and uh, I try to do the, the, like the project management. So what I do for this, I'm not hammering like this because then the pin can come out. I'm hammering like a, about a 45 degree angle. And then it's like yeah, three or four blows. So one, two, three. And you see, if I, I don't hammer very hard, you have more control. So 
but of course uh, you have to watch your fingers So when these things are all in uh, on the NAS one, uh, we do some checks and uh, we have to talk to the museum and to the owner of the tracks uh, on uh, a game plan for testing them, which mainly is driving at overload. Uh, you can drive on the street but you have less friction on the tracks, so the stress on the pins and on the tracks is less than in the dirt and overload is quite loose dirt and especially uh, in the winter it's moist so it's a bit harder so I think it's a good testing ground for this uh, it's not of a, uh, yeah, a tank for battle anymore luckily so uh, yeah for the testing we don't have to go to the extreme limit because it's a tank that will be used for display and a little bit driving around like at Militrax Overloan uh, so the tracks don't have to be as good as they used to be in the war but uh, we want to be sure that they are capable of doing the same job especially because of originality and also because uh, yeah to show to the people that are interested in buying these tracks that they are up to the job they want to do with it so uh, yeah so keep uh, watching these videos and keep uh, looking for updates and then we will inform you on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, the, the links are in the description below. Uh, we will inform you there when we are going to do the testing. Well, not the date because we cannot allow public to be there, but uh, maybe we have like a fan date, then we will uh, let you know the date. But after testing the, the videos, we will show you on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. We have placed all the locking pins but still have to bend them over and also in a few places we have uh, cutter pins uh, so we can take this pin out easily uh, we have placed them at random order and uh, now we can take those pins out quite easily for checking on damage and over here I have a few that are already bent over, like an S shape, and the track is running in this direction, so when it comes down, when there would be a rock here, it would push the pin in this direction, so it is less, so you have less chance of breaking it off. Now we have to, uh, to bend all the rest, and then we can go to overload. So at the moment I'm working on uh, the locking pins, the, the S-shaped pins for locking the track pins in place. Uh, what we do So I showed you before that we bend one side over on a, a mold and then the next thing is bending over the, the pin, yeah, putting it in and then bending over the pin a little bit. So we'll put the pliers on so that the pin doesn't rotate and then with a hammer I bend the end over. And now, uh, because it's already partially bent, it's easier to bend the rest with uh, the pliers. Turn them upright. And then I do a bunch of pins because I have to adjust uh, the pliers after each bend. So 
So this is the way we put the pins in. I don't know how they done it in the factory. We before had a multi and then the pins were a lot thinner and we could put a tool on it and then twist them over. But these are too thick. I can imagine that in the factory uh, they did something similar with bending one side first and then the second side on the pin itself. But yeah, if they heated the pin or they had a special tool for it, I don't know if we want to twist them with a tool both sides at the same time or even just one side is uh, taking more force than it is uh, used to hold the pin still that it doesn't rotate so this is not possible and yeah the way we're doing it now is for us the quickest way to do it Now the other side, uh, the other side already half is done. We drove it outside now to do it on top because with the pliers it's easier. In the field I've done it at the bottom as well. But then we can uh, dig a little hole so we have room uh, for the pliers.